Hello and welcome to the fourth of Vokta Gaming's Carnage Specials. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with the final and deciding game in this best of three. First up is our Team Carnage hero. His name is Jimmy. And opposing him, managing to level the series in game two, he is the Blue Protoss. His name is Randy. So, Randy playing really, really well in game two. Managed to attack on that plus one weapons timing and devastate Jimmy's army to the point where he could not come back. He was he was down to nine SCVs at one point against, like, 50. It was horrendous. It was so, so hard to watch. Jimmy did everything he could. He tried to fight back, but in the end it was not enough and Randy leveled the series. So, we are in game three. What do each of these players do? Does Randy stick with the build he's been using so far in this best of three? I'm really not sure about it. Jimmy likely will one racks expand again from the looks of this. He's not going to do a, uh, a sneaky proxy two racks. So it looks like at the moment it looks like they're both going to stick with their builds. And that's interesting because Jimmy took it to the late game in game number one and managed to take the game with an excellent Battlecruiser Ghost composition. But in game two, Randy hit that nice timing and that timing will be there again because the, uh, the distance between here and here is not much different to the distance between bases on Ohana, but Randy again is going to go Nexus first. I feel like Jimmy could have taken more advantage of that. He's seen that happen in two games so far. As it is, he's going to scout the wrong base first anyway. But I really feel like he could have done more with those Nexus timings to take them out. Yep, we have a Forge again. Still not too sold on that. But it does give you those nice upgrade timings. It does let you get them out quick. But I feel like you could get them out anyway with the double Forge. And hit with uh, plus one, plus one anyway at the same time that Randy hits with his plus one plus one and you'd be a lot safer to begin with but we shall see so this is completely standard from both of our players so far yep assuming a base to go down now for Jimmy as he hits 400 minerals No deviation whatsoever from their builds so far. It feels like each player has come into this with their TVP build and is going to stick to that. Now, I, like I said, I liked Randy's pressure in game two. Will we see more of that in this? Or will Jimmy switch it up? Oh, Jimmy is switching it up. So in our first game, he went three barracks before factory. In our second game, he went two barracks before factory. This time, he's going one barracks into factory. So, Jimmy, it looks like, wants to do a bit more, perhaps an earlier attack. That would be interesting. The, uh, the new siege tank timing attacks are so, so nice. And I would really, really love to see them. And we have a tech lab going down. So we have one of two things. We either have banshees on the way, or... We have Siege Tank Timing Attacks. I hope it's Siege Tank Timing Attacks. I love them so much. Banshees are quite decent on this map, though, but we do not have a Starport going down, so that is going to be that. This is the Siege Tank Timing we have. Do we have Siege going down? He doesn't have the money yet. We have a Siege Tank. Does Siege go down? Does Siege go down? Come on, gas. I'm just going to sit and watch this until Siege goes down. I want it to go down. Once that hits 100 gas, if he does not get Siege, I shall cry. Because you want to get Siege with this build. Come on, it's 104, it's 112. You, you've got the money. Oh, Jimmy is letting me down. I so badly wanted him to get Siege. Siege is so wonderful with this timing attack. As it is, he's going to get these two barracks up instead. Basically, what you do with this is um, you, have, you control the base. You control the ramp here. You move out with your bioforce, you stick your tanks here, uh, yeah, pretty much just there, you can't really, uh, there's not much to fit on this side of it, but you stick your tanks around this edge, 
you siege them up and you control this ramp and you can run your bio up, attack into here and then run them back and all of the project units will take splash damage. Siege tech is on the way. Okay, here we go. This is the siege tank timing attack. 100% it is. And will Jimmy be able to pull this off? He's going to move out now. Is he going to take those tanks with him? Come on, take the tanks with you. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm really excited. What do we have in the base of Randy to take this down? We have an observer at the moment. We have a robotics bay on the way. But those colossi are going to be out far too late. That attack is going to be here already. We have just three gateways. Only one is finished. Warp gate is only just done. We have two more gateways going down. But it's going to be so late. Jimmy is going to hit with this attack. And now, now Randy sees it. What does Randy do? He has two sentries. He needs to hold this ramp. But we have bunkers going down. These siege tanks are going to siege up here at the base of the ramp. And now... Oh, he tries to force field. He does force field. But the siege tanks are within range. Oh, he doesn't have any units up there for vision. Does he scan? Oh, no. The force fields were not right at all. That could well be game over. These pylons are going to go down. The siege tanks can move up, as we see. Like I said, stick them in this area. He has bunkers to retreat to. He's going to get a bunker in the natural. We have our first Colossus on the way. The gateways are finishing up. Warp gate is finished. Can Randy mount a counter-attack to this? Can he hold this second base? He needs to. This is such a strong timing right now. And Jimmy is just rallying more and more units across the base. Randy was supply block there for a second. Luckily, he did manage to get more pylons down. Otherwise, he could not have walked in any more units to help defend this. When the Nexus goes down, he will lose supply as well. The Colossus is out. The Colossus is out and will do damage. But the bunker is up now. The bunker in the main is up. And that will help him fight this Colossus. The Colossus needs to be careful to stay out of Siege Tank range. Oh my god, he's going to get Siege Tank in the natural itself. This is going to be incredible. The Colossus is coming now. Going to try and take it down, but it just cannot. It cannot do it by itself. The Nexus is going to die. Randy is just making as many pylons as possible. Trying to keep ahead of that supply and warping in units. But is it going to be enough? He's lost that second base now, and Jimmy has got his own. Jimmy is on two base versus Randy's one base. And we have more bunkers going down. Stim is on the way. Once Stim finishes, Randy is going to be in a really difficult position. He's trying to get Colossus out, but he is not able to. Is he supply blocked? He was supply blocked uh, for those Colossi. They do take six supply, which is huge. What does Randy do at this point? How does he escape this? Uh, his Colossi can leave the base. But that is about it. He just doesn't have the units yet to attack down the ramp. And the longer he waits, the more siege tanks there are. The more bunkers there are. He's getting a warp prism. Okay, he's going to try and get down. Maybe attack the tanks from behind. But there's bunkers there as well. These tanks are so safe right now. Holy crap, Jimmy is just playing it so well. Randy is never, ever going to be able to take this base. No way, no how. The only thing to do is base trade. But Randy has... Just not enough units. Oh, this is so difficult. The warp prism is out. He's going to elevate them down. What is he going to do with them, though? All Jimmy has to do is keep some units at home, and it's game over. Like, he wins this this series. And look at this. Jimmy's getting Vikings out. He knows the only way he could lose this, perhaps, is a mass colossi attack. So he's going to get Vikings out to help fight them. He already has two at the front. It looks like Randy is going to bypass. Randy is going to go for the base of Jimmy. Jimmy must sense something is happening. He, he's got to have a, a, a feeling that Randy's got to do something. And yes, he does. He's getting three bunkers up at home. He's thought to himself, how could I possibly lose this game? I could lose it in a base trade. So he's getting three bunkers up at home. At the very least, this forces the Protoss into a choke that he can't get past. We have SCVs coming now. Tanking some of the damage. The siege tanks are doing damage of their own. Jimmy at the moment is just going to hold at the bottom of this base. And try desperately to hold his ramp. He's not even going to enter the base trade scenario just yet. All he wants to do is hold this attack. And hold that natural from going down. He wants to make sure this wasn't a fate. But this is all the units Randy has pretty much. So Jimmy is now moving up with his marines. Jimmy is in the main base. He's going to take down the robotics facility. Before any more Colossi come out. And Randy GG's. Team Carnage's Jimmy takes the series. 
Two games to one. Oh, absolutely incredible. I love the Marine Siege Tank timing in TVP at the moment. Unfortunately, I don't love it as a Protoss player, but I love to see it happen. And Jimmy played that immaculately. Randy had no answer for it. So Team Carnage's Jimmy takes this series two games to one. And that is me done recording Carnage specials for the day. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget these will be posted to both youtube.com forward slash Voctagaming and youtube.com forward slash Carnage Esports TV. As well as that, you can find me every Friday over at youtube.com forward slash Vapor Game and at www.ezstarcraft.com. Also, please, please, please. Join us on the forums at www.scforum.eu where I will be very shortly holding the SC Forum Open Tournament. More details on that coming in the next few days on youtube.com forward slash Voxer Gaming. Once again, thank you very much. I've been your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and I will see you all again next time.